I feel like this could be a very bad idea. Making a video about a Speedmaster Professional Moonwatch when I don't really know much about it. I've never owned one, and this is really the first time I've even worn one. Yeah, yeah, it went to the moon, Buzz Aldrin, NASA. I know the basics, but reference numbers, movements, dot over 90. I fear the wrath of the speedy community. But maybe there's some use to me, a non-Speedmaster guy, documenting his first real experience with the legendary watch. Probably not, but maybe. The universe is mysterious. So many unknowns and unknowable realities have puzzled humans for millennia. And on the top of that list is this. Can you really be a watch collector if you've never owned a Speedmaster Professional? If you're not a watch collector, this question might give you some insight into the status of this timepiece. If there ever was a legendary, iconic watch, the Speedmaster Professional is it. And because of its story and still attainable price, it seems like every collector has had one, or several. Even normies know the Speedy Pro. I've seen versions of this watch on nearly as many wrists as I've seen Rolex Submariners, and that's because everyone loves space. During the 1969 Apollo 11 moon landing, it may have been Neil Armstrong who took that first giant leap for mankind, but it was Buzz Aldrin who took a giant leap for Omega by wearing a Speedy on the lunar surface. For the last 50 years, Omega has really worked that Moonwatch angle. Like, really, really worked it. It's, it's a bit much for me. Now, I like the moon. It seems like a great place, and I'm very impressed by it. And I agree that landing on the moon was one of humankind's greatest achievements. But I've always thought that the modern Speedmaster has a tenuous connection with that feat. In my mind, something like a Rolex GMT made in 1968 has more to do with the first lunar landing than a 2022 Speedy Professional. At least that GMT was likely worn by someone as they watched the moon landing on TV. This Speedmaster wasn't there, and it was made by a company that's completely different in most ways from the Omega of the 1960s. Today's Omega just happens to own the Moonwatch intellectual property, or rather, the Swatch Group does. Maybe I'm being too cynical and too literal, if this watch reminds someone of space travel and of the amazing accomplishments of science and adventure, then great. If it inspires awe and gratitude, then good. For many people, this watch acts as a totem and a reminder, and honestly, I'm a little jealous. And with that cold emotional distance I have, I think I'm able to kind of assess this watch more objectively, which maybe is a dumb thing in this emotionful hobby. But to me, this new Speedmaster Professional Moon Watch is just a watch. And is it a good watch? First, some facts. This is the latest generation Speedmaster Professional. It was announced only a year ago and has the reference number 310. It has this reference number. To many collectors, describing the specs of this watch is like describing how water is wet, but I'm gonna do it anyway, for science. The watch is 42 millimeters across, 13.2 millimeters thick, and 47.5 millimeters long. It has 50 meters of water resistance, takes a bracelet that tapers from 20 millimeters at the lugs to 15 millimeters at the clasp. The watch weighs about 135 grams, and it lists for $7,150. This version has sapphire crystals on both the front and back of the watch. Because of that, it's known to many as the sapphire sandwich, which is weird because what sandwiches are named for their bread and not what's inside? I'll take the sourdough sandwich, please, thanks. There were a few small changes to the case of this latest version of the Sapphire Sandwich. It's slightly thinner and slightly shorter, by about half a millimeter in both dimensions. The bracelet has even more noticeable differences. There are more links and smaller links, and the taper is extreme. Tapering from 20 millimeters to 15 millimeters at the clasp is a considerable narrowing that gives the watch a vintage feel. Between the small case tweaks and the bracelet redesign, I think this probably wears a little smaller than the previous version of the Moonwatch. And while it's subtle, I think it'll be a welcome change for many collectors. On my 7-inch wrist, I think it looks great, and I really like the bracelet taper. I think that if the watch had a smaller diameter, that combined with the bracelet might make it feel too small. But as is with this large, dial-heavy watch head, these proportions work really well for me. I've heard some people complain about the sharpness of the bracelet and clasp, I haven't had any issues with this, but I have had some issues with my arm hair getting pulled. These loose links pinch my arm hair between them, and so I'm getting some unpleasantness when I move the watch around. As for the clasp, I like it, but it could be better. 
Some sort of micro adjustment would be great. And thankfully, my man, Watch On My Wrist, has a solution. For around $250, you can buy the clasp for the Omega Chronoscope. This clasp has a push-button adjustment system and fits this new Speedy bracelet perfectly. You can learn all you need to know from his Instagram story. It's linked to from this video's description. Why Omega didn't put that clasp on this new Speedmaster, I don't know. But I expect the decision had something to do with money. Inside the watch is the new Caliber 3861. Like with all Moonwatch movements, this is manually wound. And it doesn't look very different from the previous 1861 movement, but it is. The new 3861 uses a coaxial escapement. It's a system that Omega has been using at scale for over a decade. But this is the first time the Speedmaster Professional has used this escapement technology. There are probably some Speedmaster purists, or maybe a lot of Speedmaster purists, who are bothered by the coaxial escapement here. But for the non-neck beards, this is very cool. The coaxial escapement reduces wear and can provide for a more accurate movement, which this watch certainly has. The latest moon watch is certified as a master chronometer by METES, the Swiss Federal Institute for Metrology. Well, first the watch is certified as a chronometer by COSC, and then it's tested by METES. The 3861 has 50 hours of power reserve, it hacks, it's resistant to at least 15,000 gauss of magnetic resistance, and it's accurate to within minus zero to plus five seconds per day. That's part of the master chronometer spec. To accomplish the anti-magnetism, the balance spring is made of silicon, and to help get the timing adjustment right, the balance is free sprung and adjusted with small weights that look like screws on the balance wheel. There are also some changes on the flip side, on the sapphire reference, the Omega logo is now applied in white metal rather than printed, and the dial is once again stepped. That means that the sloping towards the edges begins with a small vertical bevel. I really like this. Some collectors also claim that the subdials are deeper on this new version, but I'm not sure anyone has confirmed that. One thing I have confirmed though is my surprise at the loom. It's much brighter than I expected. This is a very handsome watch. I see plenty of photos of the Speedy Pro, but having it on my wrist for a few days, I've really come around to its looks. I've always thought that the Moon Watch was kind of boring looking. No color, thin hands, nothing bold or eye-catching. But I found it, especially with this bracelet, to be quite elegant. The lyre lugs, the domed crystal, I really like the polished links that are only available on this sapphire sandwich reference. I usually don't like polished surfaces on bracelets but I think this gives just enough bling here. Okay, so, what's the verdict? One, is it good? Two, do I like it? First, good is subjective. A lot of people don't seem to get that. But I don't think you can doubt the quality of this watch. Now maybe you think it's less historically accurate or has lost some charm, but I don't think you can argue against its fit and finish. And this movement, come on, no question. And yes, I like it a lot. Would I buy it? No, not enough water resistance for me, and I just don't use chronographs. And looking at this moon watch, I still don't feel any closer connection to the lunar landing, but I kind of envy people who do. If you see this watch on your wrist and it helps you remember what humans are capable of, if it inspires you to look at the stars and reminds you of the bravery of modern adventurers and the minds of our best scientists, then you're lucky. The only thing this watch reminds me of is that I forgot to wind it. <laughs>